Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, it's another solemn moment that we gather in this house, Lord, on the Sabbath day that uh, we may praise your name. And uh, we don't have any information apart from the information that comes from heaven. As uh, the bread is changed on the table of shoe bread, remember the people gathering here and the other four corners of the world, that uh, you may touch the lips of the ministers with the call from the altar, and they may be sanctified to speak only that which Christ shall speak from heaven, and the angels bring them to us, and we bring them to thy people. More so, help the preacher learn, and the congregation learn too. In the name of thy son, I ask these things. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, I just want to thank the Lord that uh, he has made this meeting to happen. Uh, I'll be taking you through three sessions, and that is uh, the church history. I'll also be taking you through the prophetic insights through Daniel and Revelation, but I want to alert you this early that uh, I'll dwell so much on the, on the three angels' messages. I know Brother Ken is doing something so important on the everlasting gospel, and I hope I won't interfere with his presentation, but I'll be listening as he present and just build on it because I know the spirit that is ministering to us is one spirit, is it? And so... Brother Ken, I, I thought about talking about the three angels' messages just there from Daniel to Revelation. But mm -hmm. even if we speak the same thing, it doesn't matter because repetition makes impression. And that is how we learn from each other. So uh, I thank the Lord that um, we are here and speaking about these things because this is the time to speak about them. And so I'll be taking you through the church history and then prophetic insights on Daniel and Revelation, and then I'll be taking you through the gospel order, uh, why we need a people who are unified and a people who are one and a people who can share responsibilities, people who can share finances, which is something which is so thorny in the lives of the people. When you touch finances, the faces of the people light up because they understand that their pockets will have to be empty which is not something good. If you have an empty pocket, that is not good, is it? Everyone wants their pockets to be full. I don't know who is going to go to heaven with their pockets. So you start emptying them now and store that treasure where it is needed. Amen? Yeah. And so that will be appearing under gospel order. I won't even touch those things of finances, just how we have to unify and do the work. That will be my main purpose because people who are converted need, don't need to be talked about money, is it? How can you be converted and your money is not converted? That is a mystery, is it? Yeah. We don't want to have mysteries, such as small, small mysteries. And so uh, the, 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 the church history, where do we start with such a thing as the church history? Uh, because uh, in this hour, I'll be going to deal with the church history. The, the history of the church is uh, an important history to us. Because um, without the church, there is no mission and commission to the world. And so a church must be there so that it may be sent to the whole world to preach and uh, bring in, as we are told, that um, the net catches every fish. And so the call is made to everyone to come in and then the Lord himself is the one who actually, after calling, many are called but few are done what? Chosen. So many are called. Don't be part of those who are many called and then few chosen. Remain among us those who are chosen. And so we have to look at the church history and uh, what God has to accomplish with it. But uh, why do we have to learn about the church history? Uh, I'd like us to have our Bibles. It is good the electricity went. It's not good it went. 
Sometimes we come and we want to look at the TV, is it? But uh, let us interact with our Bibles these few hours that uh, the electricity, you should be praying that that electricity comes back because uh, we need these things to be live streamed and we can live stream without the electricity too. So why, why should we learn about the church history? And then uh, I, I'll touch about some few things that uh, maybe you won't think about. They make up church history, but it's just building. We are just laying the foundation this week so that when we start building on the foundation, it is a solid foundation. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, why learn about the church history? Uh, mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Why learn about the church history? We are told, verse 11, now all these things happen unto them for what? In some books, are we in First Corinthians 10, verse 11? Now all these things happen unto them for what? In some books or examples or some, uh, yes, and they are done what? They are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are done what? Are come. And so the reason why we have to give the church history, uh, we have to think about what happened in the past. Because in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, we are told that there is nothing new under what? The sun. What has been is what shall be, and God required of the history of the past. Now, as a people, we are bound to repeat the things that have been in the past if we don't learn of them. Are we together? We are bound to do what? Hey, we are bound to repeat the things that have happened if we don't learn from them. And we don't want to repeat the history in a negative way. Amen? We want to repeat the history in what? In a positive way. And so that is why we have to learn the church history so that um, when it comes again to repeating that church history, it is not in a negative way, but in a positive way. So this is the very reason why we learn the church history. You may hear some startling things that happened in the past. Just uh, uh, be comforted that you are listening or hearing them because they'll help you to better choose what you are going to do at um, this time. And uh, uh, the, the church history is a, a rich history. Some of us uh, have ideas of the church history that uh, starts in 1844, well and good. That is a good history, and uh, we shall be looking unto it. But um, the church history begin all the way from uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 2, or chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, when man is created, when a man and a woman is created. Because when they were created, also they were given the Sabbath to worship the Lord. And we are told that uh, the church here on earth is united with the church in heaven. So when man was created, actually it was the establishing of the church. And uh, we have seen turbulent times of the church, starting all the way from Genesis. And uh, you have two people on earth making up the church. That is Adam and Eve. The reason why we are here today is because of the sin problem. Two people who made up the church did not agree on what to do. Do you know that? Are we aware of that? We are not aware of that. Some people are aware, some are not aware, is it? But two people who made up a church disagreed on something. Or one did what was not supposed to be done, is it? And the church found itself where it is right now. And so whatever you see happening in the church today, it is because of the confusion that started there in Eden. 
Are we together? If that confusion can be done away with, then we shall have a church which is able to proclaim the message of Christ's second coming, and he shall truly come. After the book of Genesis, after the fall of man, somebody to open Genesis chapter 3. I'll come to the history of this church. I wish we could be here for two months, Brother Phil, so that we may look at these things thoroughly. But some people have started calculating when 21 days will be over, before even it starts. You are in a wrong place at the right time. We wish we'll, we could be here. You know, you have to go back. When we reach to 1840s, we'll find that these people spend nights, is it? When the midnight cry was announced for the first time, people spend nights searching the scriptures. Great Conrovers tells us that um, they search the scriptures with the great intensity as never had been. You search scriptures with great intensity while you are busy doing other things. No, you can't do that, is it? And the meetings were as more, as numerous as you can not count because the people were sure the Lord was coming in 1840s. If that was the urgency of the church then, how much more the urgency of the church today? We need more urgency than we have never seen ever before. More so when we see prophecy being fulfilled everywhere, we need more urgency. So I was in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Look at it. I pray that the Lord will give us a, a good time. And we will not be that Eve who seduced the man to take the forbidden fruit. And we will not be that Adam who compromised and took the fruit. You don't have to fall into those two categories, being an Eve or being an Adam. Don't be the seducer of your brethren to fall into temptation. Are we together? And don't be that man or woman who will accept to be compromised. We are not in the beginning of the times. We are at the what? The end of the times. When we look at the timeline, the time we are standing in, I think the three angels' messages will prove without a, a doubt that uh, we are not at the beginning of the time, but we are at the end of the time. And the time that we are living in is probationary time not the normal time. We are living in probational time. So Genesis chapter 3, just looking at this church and what the church has to understand. Remember, this is the topic, the church history, and we are streaming down to the time that you are living in. So we are just laying a foundation for it. Genesis chapter 3, and uh, look at verse uh, 15, the first gospel to be preached. The gospel cannot be preached where there is no church. And so we hear the first gospel being preached in Genesis chapter 3, 15. And what do we have there? And I'll do what? I'll put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise what? His heel. And so that is the scenario we are in. The church must understand it is in the great controversy between the seed of the serpent and the seed of whom? The seed of the woman, is it? The controversy is between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. The controversy we are having right now is not a controversy between religions. Are we together? But we have a controversy, not a controversy of churches per se, but a controversy between error and truth and the revealed truth of God versus the fables or the fables of men. And so it is better as a member of the church to understand the great controversy. Who you are at controversy with. Do you know why we are here today? The reason why we are still here on earth is the misunderstanding of the controversy and the role of the church members. People think that they are here for a brother to be against a brother and a sister against a sister. This is not the controversy that we are in. The controversy we are in is between 
the serpent, the seed of the serpent, and the seed of the woman. That is the greatest controversy that the church has. But then we come here and we think that, oh, I have come here to put some brother or sister straight. Is that, is that so? And so you know what you do? When you come with that mentality, in these 21 days, you keep seeking for an opportunity to put somebody straight, is it? Will you achieve anything? Because you don't understand the great controversy somebody to put the projector on, the instrument on. So you come here, and instead of understanding the controversies between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, you end up not having no benefit at all. And so once the church understands what is the controversy all about, then we shall be ready to proclaim the message. And so the church history is so important to understand that all the way from Genesis, the story is about the seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman. And so uh, the Lord is seeking to put enmity and establish the church in present truth so that it may be able to accomplish. But um, as let us go through the, the first church and... Uh, Let, let us go through the first church and understand some things. Because the first church had a problem. Because the first church had a problem. Can we learn from the first church the problem? And uh, th this is going to be interesting because... Uh, uh, I'm going to touch some of the things maybe we cannot expect in church history. I pray that uh, they, they will move your heart so that as we just keep building on this, uh, the Lord will help us and uh, we will uh, get uh, some few things straight. And so God has been able to put... Uh, man, every man in uh, their sphere so that uh, they may understand their duty and the position they should be in. Uh, yeah, it's okay. They may understand their duty and the position they, they should be in. When, uh, after Adam and Eve had seen the Lord instituted sacrifices, which maybe at some point you may learn. But then also this church never maintained purity. And the Lord came in Genesis chapter 6 and destroyed the church then. Is it? Destroyed everyone, not the church, but destroyed everyone apart from the people who are true to him. In Genesis chapter 6, we have a controversy brewing. We are looking at the church history. Are we together? Yes. And so in Genesis, chapter, we have seen the church in Genesis, the woman and the man, Adam and Eve, is it? And then you come to the stream of history. And in Genesis chapter 6, everything that is bad can happen. And in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man always, for that he is only flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. And so they were given 120 years to repent, is it? Noah building the earth. What happened after 120 years? The flood came and destroyed everyone apart from the church at that point, is it? Yeah. But then this one also got into trouble and it continued with that and it lost its purity. But um, it is in a place, a special place or a certain place that the church which was there also had a great problem and the Lord uh, had to destroy some other people who wanted to ruin the church. Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis chapter 19, is it? So you are coming and you are coming and Sodom and Gomorrah 
is destroyed and God preserves some few people. Before we even come to the gospel order, we have to see this happening. And then after that, the people of God goes where? Where do they go? After Genesis 19, where do they go? Egypt, is it? Do we agree they go to Egypt? I want you to, to respond. Do we agree they go to Egypt? They go to Egypt, is it? And there, they are corrupted with the Egyptians. And then in Exodus, God has to send deliverance for his people in Egypt. And they start coming from Egypt. And a journey that had to take how many days? 11 days takes how many years? 40 years where? In the wilderness. We are told in Patriarchs and Prophets that it was not the will of God that the church should be in the wilderness for all that time. Are we together? The church didn't have to be in the wilderness for all that time. But because of the hardness of their heart, not embracing what God wanted and the gospel order at that time, when we reach at the gospel order, you will find that there is nothing that can be accomplished in this field without gospel order. So he brings them out of Egypt, tries to establish them on a, a, a firm platform, but they do not continue with that. We are told, again, just a, day, a, a journey that had to take 11 days takes about 40 years in the wilderness. Why? Because of the murmuring. And the church starting to retreat back to where? To Egypt. Tries to ruin the plan of God of finishing the gospel. We are told if the Jewish people could have obeyed the voice of God, they could have been Christians. I'm just touching these few things here and there. And so they come. They are brought to Canaan. And remember, only two people enter into Canaan, is it? Jacob and who? Uh, I mean, uh, Caleb and Joshua, is it? They go to Canaan, and in chapter 7, you, you know, you should understand what is happening to the church. What is the problem in uh, Genesis chapter 3? Somebody talk to me. What is the problem in Genesis chapter 3 in the first church? What is the problem in the first church in Genesis chapter 3? Sin was the problem. Listening to the voice of the other, is it? Now, what do you call that? If you are married to somebody and uh, they start listening to another man, what is that? That is adultery, is it? So some spiritual adultery is happening in Genesis chapter 3, is it? Because these ones who are married to God, they are not listening to the voice of their husband, but they are following after another, is it? Why do I use that typology? Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we are told Christ is the head of the church, is it? Is that what we are told? Christ is the head of the church, is it? As the husband is the head of the woman, is it? So we have the marriage in the first church. God married to his church. But they don't listen to him. That is spiritual adulterer. When you come to Genesis chapter 6, what is happening to Genesis chapter 6? An issue to do with marriage is happening again, is it? Men, the sons of God see that the daughters of men are fair and they start doing what? Marrying them, is it? But um, the church initially in Genesis 3.15, we are told, God said that the seed of the woman shall be against the seed of who? The serpent, is it? But you find Eve has mixed herself, has gotten herself in a situation with the devil, is it? So <clears throat> there is an illicit connection between Eve and, Adam, and, and, um, and the serpent. When you come to... Genesis chapter 6, you find that there is also an illicit connection between the sons of God and the daughters of men. Again, the same issue of marriage and uh, unfaithfulness. 
happening with the church. When uh, you come to Genesis chapter 19, what is the problem? Are you seeing a sequence of things that bring the church down? An illicit mm -hmm. connection with other entities. When you come to Genesis yeah, all chapter people 19, will see, will see, but very many there, they can live in like 1,000. So what is it should be saying? When you come to Genesis chapter 19, who, uh, who knows what's happening in Genesis chapter 19? Sodom and Gomorrah. And what is the problem in Sodom and Gomorrah? Huh? Their name is a problem by the way. Do you know that? Do you know what's the problem in Sodom and Gomorrah? The, the name itself is a problem. What is Sodom? Huh? We know what it means. From Sodom, is it? So there's a problem in Genesis chapter 19, and Lot is placed in a problem. Lot, the rem remnant, in where? In Sodom, where there is Sodom. And then there is this kind of intermingling between the Sodomists and the remnant church. There's a lot of kind of things happening spiritually and literally from Genesis chapter 3, which Actually, if we don't understand this church history, when we reach at our time, we won't understand what the devil is doing. But we are told the devil repeats the same things over and over again in a different way, and we are caught up in the net. While it is only the same thing being repeated, is it? Yeah, nothing new under the sun. And so you see this spiritual adultery in Genesis chapter 3. You see literal and spiritual adultery in um, Genesis chapter 6. When you come to Genesis chapter 19, what do you find again? Spiritual and literal fornication in Genesis chapter 19. But what happens to the Israelites when they come out of uh, Egypt? Numbers chapter 25 brings about a problem, is it? That is the church in the wilderness. When you reach at Numbers chapter 25, what do you find? The more, this is uh, Balaam. Balaam has tried to entice the children of God, but he cannot succeed, is it? Yeah. He has tried false doctrines. He has tried this and he has tried this, but he's not succeeding. And what does he do? He said, oh, I'll make a feast. And this feast, let us invite the Israelites and let us give them the more by two women and let them give us their what? Their sons and daughters, is it? And there we have Cosby and Zimri coming together. And the plague, starting on Numbers chapter 15, you find what happened in Numbers chapter 25 in the book of Revelation under the churches, is it? Balaam who enticed the children of God to partake of uh, the offerings made to idols. Again, the, that church, God comes with it and they cross into uh, the land of promise, but then they start mingling with the tribes they had been told do not mingle with. Is it? And what does God do? They start worshiping the God of Ashtaroth. They start worshiping the God of Balim. And they start uh, worshiping various kinds of things, even worshiping the gods of Egypt. Making calves. You remember what uh, Jeroboam did? He said, it is too much for you to go to Jerusalem to worship, is it? I'll make one calf here at Dan and another one where? And then you choose where you will go to worship, is it? Again, the church starts doing what God doesn't want them to do. At the end, the Lord sends them to Babylon. And their temple is raised down. And now we are coming to the stream of time and we have reached at around 605, 606, 605, 606, 605 uh, BC. And then uh, we have the devil just repeating the same thing. Before the children of Israel went to captivity, do you want to see what happened to them? Let us turn to the book of... Uh, is it first Samuel or first Kings? Yeah. 
Let us try the book of First Samuel again. Uh, First Samuel and uh, First Samuel chapter three. Where am I? First Samuel chapter two. I want you to see what is happening in Israel. Uh, first Samuel chapter two, verses twenty two. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. But um, that is not the only problem also that was there uh, in Israel. When uh, you go, let me just uh, show you another verse. Uh, there was sodomy in Israel at that time. Uh, in, in those days, there was sodomy in Israel. Let us go to the book of First Kings, chapter fourteen. The uh. Who is still with me? Who is still with me? Are you seeing the chain of events and how they are related? Yeah. How the church is just ensnared. It is the same thing, but a twist. A same thing, but a twist of it. First Kings chapter 14. Why they went into captivity. First Kings chapter 14. And uh, look at uh, verses... Uh, 21 to 24. Are we there, Amen? First Kings chapter 14, verses 21 to 24. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 14, one year old when he began to reign, and uh, he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was who? Nama and what? An Ammonite. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord. And they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. For they also built them high places and images and groves on every hill and under every green tree. And what was happening? And there was what? Sodomites in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations, which the Lord cast out before the children of what? So we are having also some illicit marriages happening. All the way we are having these intercourses that uh, God has said that they should not be there. And so the Lord sends them from the land of Canaan to another land, to the land of uh, Babylonians. The Babylonians comes, they take them down. They burn their temple. But Israel don't learn. Do you think Israel learn? Do you think the church of God learn? Do you think it learns? Huh? It does what? It takes long to learn. For how long will it take long to learn? Because these connections which are destroying the church of God from Genesis until where we have reached in the land of Canaan, doesn't stop there. They are sent into Babylon. But when they go to Babylon, they, they seemingly seem like they are repentant of what they are doing. But a little stay in Babylon takes them to the same situation they were in. Let us look at the book of uh, Nehemiah. Because this is the greatest thing that the church is going to have at this present time that when we look at how we have connected ourselves with others, then we shall see how this thing is being repeated ever and ever again. 
Nehemiah chapter 13. Children, are we together? Hello, children, are we together? Hey, maybe, I, I, let me see children, because I really want to speak to children. Let me see children. Excuse me. To be a child, you have to be how many years? Between? 12 below. That is a child. Okay, young women and women. Let me see those who are there. Are we understanding each other? Are you getting something? I, want, I don't want to leave the pulpit without you understanding. Are we still together? Because the adults will have fed a lot. They have a lot of information. They don't need to hear what I'm saying. But I want to move along with the children or the young. If I say children, I just mean if you are 30 and below. So don't be offended. You are a child. This is not to look down upon you. You are what? A child. I don't mean you are suckling. Okay? Yeah. So children, are we together? People like being offended. At very small things, people get offended. So, are we in Nehemiah? Does the church learn? Let us see. Again, they have been taken to Babylon, okay? They seem repentant, and God tells them in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 36, 70 years in captivity, then you go back to Jerusalem, is it? To rebuild the temple. But now see them here and see what they are doing in uh, Nehemiah chapter 13 from verse 23. If you reach there, please say amen. And uh, pray for that time that it doesn't keep moving this fast, okay? Because we don't want the time to move fast. Nehemiah chapter 13 from verse 23. In those days also saw I Jewish that, hey, do you have a Bible? Assist this sister with a Bible. We will have to purchase the Bibles before we leave. Do you have one? Huh? Hey, don't make, make sure you don't come here without a Bible. We are going to sort that out because I may read what is not in the Bible. How will you know? You will have to depend on the neighbor to know what I have read is true, okay? Yeah, but uh, tomorrow we are going to make sure that uh, we are having our Bibles. Amen? Amen. Yeah. How many are okay with that? Yeah, we can be planning to have Bibles and people are not happy about that. Mm. You know, you have just to make sure people are with you. So, in those days also, so I Jews that had married wives from where? Ashdod. What, what did God say in Deuteronomy chapter 7? Do not give your daughters or your son's son to them, lest they corrupt you and you go warring after other gods, is it? But who are these? The Jewish are marrying from when? Actually, this is a problem in marriage, is it? Same with Genesis chapter 3, we have a problem in marriage. Genesis 6, we have a problem in marriage. Genesis 19, we have a problem with marriage. Numbers 25, we have a problem with marriage. First Samuel chapter 2, First Kings chapter 14, we have a problem with marriage. And this leads Israel astray every now and then, the church of God, but it doesn't learn anymore. So in those days also, so I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Amnon, and Moab, and their children spake what? Half in the speech of, and could not speak in the word. The Jewish language, but according to them, and uh, take a look at this. And I contended with them and cast them and smote certain of them and plucked off their air and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your, your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourself. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outstandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives, 
And one of the sons of Joiada, the son of Eliashib, the high priest, was son in law to Sanbala the Hononite. Therefore, I chased him from me. Now, let us try to shift the, gift, the, the, the gears here. There have been a stream of time the church has been just in fornication, fornication, and the Lord keeps rebuking it and destroying it. But here, something happens. When they go to Babylon, they are told, 70 years and you go back to rebuild Jerusalem and reestablish the sacrifices and the true worship and be able to welcome Messiah the Prince. Are we together? The prophets of Daniel chapter 9. Is that what it says? That they have to go back, finish, put an end to sin, put an end to iniquity, make a reconciliation, bring in the everlasting righteousness, seal up the sum of the vision, and anoint the most high. Is that what Daniel 9 says? Yeah. But here we have a people who went to Babylon. At a certain time, they were so eager to go back to Israel. You remember the story in the book of Psalms where we, told, we are told that the Babylonian told the Jewish people, sing of us a song. Is it? At the rivers of Babylon there, we hang what? Our harps, when our what? Our offenders, our tormentors told us, sing us of one of the, those songs of Zion, is it? Then they asked, how could we sing a song of Zion in a strange land? They did, they did understand that, is it? That in Babylon is not where they come out of her, my people, is it? They knew that they should come out for them to be able to sing one of those songs of Zion, is it? But now they have reached at a point, Babylon is the place to be. Can they sing those songs of Zion? They can sing the songs of Zion while in Babylon. So even today, as a church, you are being told, come out of her, my people. Is it? We do not learn enough from history. Are we ready to come out of Babylon? Or we want to sing songs of Zion in Babylon? That is why we continue embracing that education, that food, that clothing, and everything that you can mention, which we shall not mention. Singing the songs of Zion where? In Babylon. Marrying those Babylonian women and getting married to those Babylonian men. And you, you hear ladies asking, where are uh, converted men in this movement to be married to? Is it? If they are not there, then God has ordained that you should not get married. <laughs> Now, we, we take that lightly, but that is it. Because if you just go against that, you will get those who are not converted. And if you are not seeing a lady, what, does, what is God saying? Yeah. For he says this in Matthew chapter 19. You know, this issue of marriage was there in, Genesis chapter, uh, in Matthew chapter 19, and uh, 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 the disciples told Jesus, if this is the case between a man and a woman, it's better a man that may remain so. And he said, Listen to me. There are eunuchs who are born so. Is it? And there are eunuchs who have been made so by men. And there are be eunuchs who have made themselves so for the kingdom of what? So you have to understand which kind of eunuch you are falling on. Is it because you are born so? Remain so. Is it because men have made you so? And how do men make other men not to marry and other women not to get married? Let us talk a little bit. First of all, yeah, they castrate you. That is one. Number two, Sister White says in Letters to Young Lovers, go check it, flirting of hearts. Flirting with hearts. What, do you, what is it? like flirting with hearts. You meet this young girl, you tell her, I love you, is it? Two days, you break her heart. Another man comes, I love you. Break the heart, run away. Another one, when she has gone through five men, do you think she has a heart still ready to get into marriage? 
And if she gets into marriage, what kind of heart will she be carrying there? She doesn't have her heart anymore. What she'll go there is just to quarrel with the husband. We have to think about this family issue so important because family issue is part of the third angel's message. You can get that in child guidance. C can you check child guidance? You, you see these things, we have to prove them. Let us go to child guidance. Child guidance, I, I have to give you a page. Are we having those estate? CG, a company. Just write a company, the third angels. 558.1. Five fifty eight point one. Somebody to read so quickly. Tell guidance with a loud voice. Oh, we we do not have phones. Let let me read from mine. Yes, the special work. Yes. Is to make the Lord of God plain to their children yes. and to have their obedience to them, that they may see the importance of obeying God all the days of their life. This was the work of Moses. He was to endure upon parents their duty to be good. Yes. This is the work of that. The work that above everything else must be done in the whole life of the It is to accompany the third angel message. Thank you, brother. Parenting is to accompany the word. The third angel's message. So if you are here and you are a parent and you don't know what it means to be a parent, you are not going to proclaim the third angel's message. You thought that understanding Daniel chapter 13, uh, Revelation 13 is the real deal, is it? And Revelation 17. And to quarrel about Daniel 11, is it? And to understand Revelation 18. That is the third angel's message, is it? What about the messages accompanying it? To give it an impetus. Will you be fully proclaiming the third angel's messages without this? In fact, we are told in Malachi chapter 4, Behold, I send Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great day of the Lord, is it? And he shall turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to that. We take that to be so spiritual. We say that, uh, oh, the children will believe what the fathers believe. And then what will the fathers believe? What the children believe? Is that how we see it? You can see it like that. But also it has to do something with this literal connection of the families. That this issue of parenting and setting up families that can worship God in truth and in spirit shall be restored so that you may have a church that is fully mature, not having infants wanting to proclaim the third angel's message, is it? And so here, when you go back to Nehemiah, you find that uh, this, they were comfortable in being Babylon and singing in Babylon. But another thing that happened there the son to the high priest had gone to marry from the tribe that was prohibited. Remember, this is church history. We are coming just with it slowly, and we shall see what the Lord is speaking to us. Now, when it reaches time to go back and build Jerusalem, and we shall see the typology of then and, and uh, where we are right now. I want to try to bring this to a point we can understand. Now, they had to go and rebuild the temple. True. And to make the sacrifices. To bring an end to sin. Iniquity. Bring in everlasting righteousness. Seal up the vision and annoy the most holy. Are we together until that point? Try to understand from this point on. Now, could they rebuild the temple while they were corrupted? Could they do that? They could not do that. How do we know they could not do that? Go to Ezra. 
we are looking at this church because before you know we like saying oh that church in the wilderness the jewish people but when we come to our time we shall see startling things that even the old israel will be excused what they did but what why did i say we are learning the church history why was the reason history does what and we are told these things were written for our admonitions, those of whom have come to the ends of this world. And so in the book of Ezra, look at this. They, they, they want to go and rebuild Jerusalem, but look at what is happening. Ezra chapter 8. This is the church wanting to finish the work. Remember, this is the church wanting to finish the work, but look at the state it is in. Ezra chapter 8 in verse 15, it says, this is Ezra, and I did what? Let no one disturb you. Concentrate on the scriptures. And I gathered them together to the river that runneth to Ahava, and there abode we in tents three days, and did what? And, and, Will the sanctuary services go on without the sons of Levi? No way. No way. It could not go on. Because the sons of the Levi were to do the, the, the they were, we had the, the, those who were to clean the sanctuary, those who were to carry the vessels of the sanctuary, those who were to assist the people in bringing their offerings to the temple. Without them, they could not function. The sanctuary could not function. Praise the Lord. The sanctuary could not function. Is there a sanctuary we must build in the end time? Does God require his church in the end time to build the sanctuary? Huh? Let us go to the book of 2 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. Is it 1 Peter or 2 Peter? 1 Peter. I hope we are learning, is it? Are we learning? First Peter chapter 2. They were to build the sanctuary. We have to build the sanctuary. But in a different way. Okay? Wherefore, having aside, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, a so be have tasted the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are done what? Build up a what? A holy what? To offer what? Uh -uh, are we together? Spiritual sacrifice, indeed. So they had to build a sanctuary and offer sacrifices. Bring an end of sin, iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision and anoint the most holy, is it? That is the reason they had to build the sanctuary, to rebuild the sanctuary. But also we are told that the end time church has to repeat the same things, but it is a spiritual house. Are we together the children of God? Now, the state of the Israelites, there was no what? Levites, or there were no priests. Could God work with that church? He could not. Why could God not work with that church? Go to the book of Haggai. The book of Haggai. I want us to learn and uh, it, 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 I, I want us to ask the Lord to speak to us individually. Because we have come to a time everyone has to re-examine are they going to be part of the pure church that will be used by God, okay? That is why we are learning church history. We may not be caught where Israel was caught. Are we together? The book of Haggai chapter Two. Uh, 
Vasilev. Das said the who? Ask now concerning what? Saying, if one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with the skirt to touch bread of pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? And say no. You can check the law of the priests in Leviticus chapter 10 about offerings. That an impure priest was not allowed in the sanctuary, is it? Yeah. When the sons of um, Aaron, who is that? Abihu and Nadab came into the sanctuary drunk. What happened to them? The glory of the Lord struck them, is it? And they were carried out of the sanctuary with the other Levites. Because they brought the strange fire in the sanctuary, they came there without understanding how they should appear. That is what the church should realize. It cannot accomplish what God has decreed them to accomplish in a state of uncleanness. And we shall identify what is this uncleanness. So he said, no. Verse 13 says, then said Haggai, if one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of this, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be what? Unclean. Then, then answered Haggai and said, so is, and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and that they which offer there is what? The church that was to go back and build, rebuild Jerusalem was how? Unclean. Now, let us see what it did, because we are coming to that church, and soon we are entering into this church. Would you like your history? Will we like our history? If you don't form the negative part of it, you will like it. But if you are part of the negative part of it, you won't like it at all. At the time you are finishing, you will know if you are part of the church which is doing the right thing or it's not doing the right thing. Maybe all of us will find ourselves we are not there. What shall we do? And that is why I say examine yourself. Don't start examining another person. You know, we have a habit of examining other people until we forget how we look like. You look at a person and say, that person is so dark. You go back to the mirror and you find you are black. At least the person was dark, is it? When you are black. Let us not have this habit of examining how other people look like. Examine yourself. That is what the Bible says. Because we, we may just have this habit of looking into things that we shouldn't be looking into. And so, let us look at this church. They had to go back building. Now, let us go to Daniel chapter 9. I think I'm halfway through the presentation. I hope to finish in time. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9 is a segment of the prophecy of Daniel chapter 8. Is that true? We have the 70 weeks cut off from the 2300 days. Is that true? You know, people, people have a, another way of looking at it. They say, no, Daniel chapter 9 is not part of Daniel chapter 8. Do we, do we have those teachings here? We shouldn't be having them. 70 weeks are cut off, is it? From the other period. To do what? Daniel chapter 9, verses 25. Knowing, verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the what? Number one, to finish transgression. Number two, to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation of iniquity. Number four, and to bring in everlasting and to seal up the vision number five and to anoint what? Are we together? This is the church. Now it's coming down the line. It has reached at a time to welcome the first 
coming of Jesus Christ, is it? The desire of nations. Look at the six points. Did that church make an end of sin? Huh? Did it make an end of sin? The Jewish church. Huh? No. Hey, how many people are still with me? I, I lost someone somewhere, is it? We are going through the church history and we have reached at this church that had to welcome the first coming of Jesus Christ. If you have forgotten everything, just remember that. Okay? And they are given six things to do. Number one, make an end of. Number two, make an end of iniquity. Is it? Number three, bring in everlasting. Number four, do what? Number four, do what? Establish the vision and the prophecy. Is, that, is, is it in that order? No, no, no. Number one, it is to make up an end to sin, finish iniquity, finish transgression. Is it? Make an end of sin. Oh, that is number two. Number one, finish transgression. Is it? Number two, make an end of what? Number three, make reconciliation of iniquity. Number four, bring in the everlasting righteousness. And number five, seal up the vision of the prophecy. And number six, anoint the, the most holy, is it? Now, did they make an end of transgression? No. You have to read the Great Controversy chapter one. If you want to know they didn't make an end of transgression and even make an end of sin. Sister White says, at that time, the priesthood was so corrupted that it was bought at a price. People could kill each other just to be a priest. Is that what she says in Great Controversy chapter one? With that, if the priesthood was that corrupted of that church, that you had to bribe to be a priest, a bribe priest in the sanctuary offering sacrifices, could it accept it? So they cannot make a reconciliation. Is it? Can they reconcile anything? If they can reconcile anything, you go to number four. There is number four, is it? Bring in everlasting. Can you have an everlasting righteousness without sacrifices being accepted? Without the blood being sprinkled on the veil and being accepted, do we have an everlasting righteousness? No, there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. And that blood must be accepted, is it? So there is no bringing in of everlasting righteousness. Let us look at the sealing up of the vision. This is one that is so much interesting. Did they seal up the vision of this prophecy? Did they do that? The vision ended, the 490, is it? But did they seal up the vision, make up the seal up of the vision? Sister White describes it in uh, Desire of Ages in a very peculiar way. It seems like comedy, but it's not comedy. She says, when Jesus was brought like this into the sanctuary, can you wake up? When Jesus was brought in the sanctuary, who brought Jesus in the sanctuary to be dedicated? The mother and the father, Joseph, is it? And they were carrying the child like this in their hands. They come to the priest, the priesthood that is corrupted, is it? Cannot make an end to sin, transgression, everlasting righteousness, and all this reconcile the sanctuary. He held the baby like this in the hand. Do you know what the priest did? You don't know. And you are Adventists. The priest took the child in the hand like this. We had Simon there and Anne and asked the mother, what is the name of the child? What do you think the mother said? Huh? You think he said Jesus? 
And the mother said to the priest, this is Jesus. And the priest recorded the name and gave back the child. What is the problem with that? Huh? You know, the priest had dedicated a lot of Jesus in that time, including Jesus Bar Barabbas. Do you know that? The one who would again be exchanged for Jesus. Can you imagine? Are you getting the scenario? The priest have held Jesus Barabbas in his hand. Who is this? This is Jesus Barabbas, is it? A record in the book and the parents go. Then another person comes with Jesus. Who is this Jesus? The priest can't even have a mind to ask who is this Jesus. But these people knew visions and prophecies, is it? They had read in Micah about Jesus. So if the priest really understood his work, he could ask, I have really dedicated a lot of children and put them in the book. Who is this Jesus again? And the mother says, this is Jesus of who? Nazareth. And the priest says, wait, wait, wait for a minute. Jesus of Nazareth, born where? And the mother says, where? This child is born in Bethlehem. But the priest will again ask, that, that is not the issue. Bethlehem where? Ephrathah. Is this Jesus born of a virgin or not a virgin? Don't you think something could have rung in his head? But he was so drunk with the wine of Babylon that he could not seal up the vision of the prophets. And so, Sister White says that they understood not a thing. But we are told, the wicked shall continue being wicked, but the wise shall do what? Shall understand. Daniel chapter 12. We are looking at the church and the repetition of history. You are telling people the latter rain is here and they're asking you what is the latter rain. We are not seeing the clouds, but you are saying it is raining. What is happening? You are just like the priest in the temple there, the church there. And so Jesus is dedicated. There is somebody in the temple who recognizes this is not a... a a normal Jesus, is it? The man Simon says, this tells the priest, okay, you have given the child, tells the mother, give me that Jesus. And he, sa he starts telling the mother in the presence of the priest. What does Simon tell the, the mother? This child shall be a thorn in your flesh. And to the people, is it? And the arm of the government shall be upon him. And the priest is still there and not understanding a thing. And he says to Mary and Joseph, now I have seen the salvation of Israel. You can allow your servant to depart in peace, is it? To sleep in peace. And the priest is still there and nothing. Like we are just seated here tonight. Not understanding what? I think, and if that was not enough, Anne says, then give me the child. And she starts speaking some things, is it? And she speaks about this child and blesses the child and there and then and leaves the child. And they leave the temple. Don't understand anything. And then the priest, they go out and they found that the wise men have met with the Herod. Church and state, is it? They meet with Herod and some Pharisees. And this heathen king is asking these Pharisees and this pride man, I have heard somebody has been born where? In Israel and not only be born, I'm hearing that he is a king. And then he tells them, do what? Go search diligently. If you find out, come and do what? And tell me. After they go to search, what do they find? The priest already dedicated the king of Israel without knowing. And the king, the, the child has, God has spoken to the child to elope to Egypt. 
And be, seeing that they are tricked, they go back to Herod, the king, and say, you know, it is like this and this. And the king says what? Do away with all children under two years. Is it? The scenario in the end time. The kings of the earth end with the church members who have fallen apostate getting rid of the remnant. History repeats itself. No one understands that thing. How long does it take for the church to learn? You say as long as it takes. Sometimes it learns when it is dead. How much can a dead person learn? Go to the mortuary right now. With a sharp knife. Take even out the ears. See if the corpse will tell you I'm hurting. <laughs> Is that what happens? Huh? We only fear dead people because we have those memories of them. And we love them so much, is it? But how much can a dead person know? Nothing. And so in this 10 minutes to finish up. So they don't seal up the sum of the vision, is it? They don't seal up the prophets. Did they anoint the most holy? They, they have not done the other five things. Do you think they are going to do the last one? At the time they have to do that, what do they do? They are away with this man, is it? Away with this man. You have to read uh, uh, this man who wrote the book, uh, Behold the Man. Is it Terry Bunch or what is that name? Behold the Man, what they did. Every false thing that could be done to Christ was done. And uh, even after them witnessing that he was the Messiah, the Prince, Herod, is that Herod or Pilate, writes, this is the king of the Jewish. But those people come and tell him, right, this man said he is the king of the Jewish. And Pilate, who is a heathen, says, what I have written, I have, I have written. Even the heathen understands that he can't change something that God ordained to be so. But it's only the people of God who tries to change things. Is it? And then, so, they fail to do the six things they had to do. The church then, remember we have traveled from Genesis just a little here, a little here, and then we are in this church of God back then at the first coming of Jesus Christ. And this is what I want you to understand. What the old Israel or the church had to do in Daniel chapter 9 verses 24, they failed to do it, but the church in the end time has to do it. Is it true? The true church of God has to make an end to transgression. Is that true? An end of sin, is it? Reconciliation for iniquity, it has to do it, is it? And it has to bring in everlasting righteousness. How is the everlasting righteousness brought about? With the everlasting gospel, is it? Yeah, because it is only the everlasting gospel that brings in everlasting righteousness. Now, you have heard that it must be preached as a what? A witness, then the end? What does it mean to preach as a witness? And you have heard me ask this. Can you recommend medication for malaria if you have malaria which cannot be healed? You come with a malaria tablet and tell me, you know this one can heal you malaria. And I ask you, what are you suffering from? Because I see you so sick. And you say, I'm having malaria. Hey, what, what, what should I do to you? I should jail you because you are in the business of deception. Don't you think so? You are a false physician, is it? What do people do to false doctors? Their licenses are revoked, is it? Why are people not accepting our gospel? Don't you think the gospel has been preached? 
but not as a witness, is it? People are preaching to people the things that the gospel can do, but they, 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 they can't, the, the same gospel can do the same things in their life. Do you think it will go with power? It can go with power. Because we are told in Revelation chapter 18, and I saw another angel from heaven, and the whole earth was filled with the what? The glory of what? Of God, is it? What is that glory? How does Sister White describe the glory? And even when Moses says, show me your glory, what did God say to him? I'm that Lord God, long-suffering, is it? And he gave the attributes of his name, is it? So the attributes of God are his glory. And so when he says that I saw another angel and the whole earth was filled with the glory of God, that character of God has to be revealed in our life, is it? Then you will be having the loud cry. No loud cry without the revelation of God in your life. Can you open now? We want to read two things and we end. That is Christ Object Lesson, page 415. COL. I tell you the history of the church from Genesis is so rich. And uh, I expect myself to understand it. And I expect you to understand it so that we may travel along together. Christ Object Lesson, page 415. Now, paragraph five, is somebody there? Yes, brother. Yes. The last message, brother, is a revelation of what? His character continue? Yes. Can you read 416, paragraph 1? The light of the sun? That is essentially Revelation chapter 18. Do we get it? It is not just going about and saying Babylon is fallen. How is Babylon fallen when you are in a fallen Babylon? Can you proclaim something fallen when you are in it? So we go about the falling of Babylon when we are there. So the last message is a revelation of his character of love, what God has done in you in good deeds and in words of truth and deeds of truth. You have to show to the world what the Lord has done to you. This is the message to the church. And I'm so thankful. Praise the Lord. Amen. In Revelation chapter 14, the 144 are standing on Mount Zion with the Lamb having the Father's name in their word. The last church. God will have a last church. So let us try to end here. What is the problem as we will be coming to this church? Because I won't go beyond that with the old church. I want us to bring us into the stream of time right now. What is the problem we are having? Um, brother, open 1SM 406, paragraph 1. I, I know I'm past, I'm past by one minute. Can you give me five minutes? We read these two quotes. I won't ask that time again in life. 1SM 406.1. 406. 406.1. 406. The trials and the attitude of the children of Israel. 406.1. Yes. We want to do what? Understand the time we are doing what? Living in. Continue on. Yet somebody says, I understand the time I'm living in, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Continue on. 
I want you to listen carefully at this because we are looking at the church history and we are saying this was written for our examples who have come to the end of the time. It is for our admonition that the trials and the attitude of the children of Israel just before the first coming Of God in their experience before the second coming of Christ. Continue how certain? Oh. Yes. The of the Jews, and today he is seeking to blunt the minds of God's servants that they may not be able to discern the precious truth. Thank you, brother. When you read that quote, how, how do you feel? You feel happy when you read it to GC or to the Sunday churches. We are told their trials and their attitude prior to the first coming has been shown again and again to illustrate the position of the people of God just prior to the word. Second, second coming, is it? Do we see bribes for people to be pastors? Do we see bribes in the church for people to hold positions? Do we see sacrifices being polluted in the sanctuary? Do we see sin being, uh, 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 being, sin being sanctified? Sin is made like righteousness, is it? Do you think we can bring an end to sin? Bring in everlasting righteousness. And anoint they fail to anoint Jesus Christ to be the priest, is it? we are going to fail to anoint Christ to be the king. Their trials and our their attitude is our trial and attitude that we may not actually have the truth of the time. The last one is 1SM uh, 124.2. Let us read that in closing. Yes. 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 If we don't understand the time we are living in, we are told that uh, there shall never be an awakening, whether small or great. Can you read 1SM 124.2? We pray. That certain fears. Yes. If such an hand is well, there would never be another awakening. Well, first of all, in the end of time. Thank you, Brother Sid. Those are the words I want us to close with. The church has traveled until the first coming of Jesus Christ. They have failed everything that they had failed to do. And now we are faced with the last church called Laodicea. That is a, not a good name. Is that a good name? That we are living under the period of what? Laodicea, is it? No. Is that a good name? A church is, that is neither hot nor cold. Is, is that a good name to be under? And the Lord is saying, the thing that Satan fears is the people to clear the way and every rubbish, is it? So that the Lord may pour his spirit upon a languishing and an impenitent what? Heart. And if he will have his way, there will never be any awakening, whether great or small. And the Lord says he wants to open our eyes and anoint it so that we may be able to hear and clean our eyes and ears so that we may be able to hear what the spirit. In fact, the message closes by saying, whoever has an ear, let him hear what? The spirit does what? Speaks to the church. And so I pray that uh, as we go through the church history, the Lord will bring something in our heart that will make us clear the way so that he may speak to us as a church, as individuals, that we may accomplish his work. May the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, gracious are thy ways, holy are thy ways. We cannot bring any holiness to your word it is only your word which can make us holy. 
help us to receive it by faith and be part of that church that will be used to finish up the work. And Lord, as we learn these things, may we not try to point fingers at others, but may we point fingers at ourselves that Lord, after examining ourselves, we may know if we are still in faith or we are reprobates. Thank you for gathering us here, Lord. You have gathered us here not to destroy us, but you have gathered us here that you may speak to us tenderly and we may hear thy voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Let none who is in this place say that uh, I will not walk in it. And so thank you for such a wonderful time. Bless us all the days that we shall be here and every speaker in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes,